I firmly believe that anyone can learn to draw, anyone can learn to paint. In fact, science backs this up. There are three phases of learning, but it's important for you to understand which phase you're in so that you know what to practice, what to work on. That's what I'm going to talk about in this video. But first, you've got to subscribe. In fact, studies show that people who subscribe to my channel are 99% more charming, more attractive, and just overall more successful. All right, let's talk about the phases of learning art. So yes, I believe that anyone can teach themselves how to draw, how to paint fantastic, beautiful images. But, 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 so it's very important that you understand where you are in that learning process. You have the proper mindset for each of those phases and you don't jump ahead. And that's a very common problem that I think a lot of people end up getting very frustrated with when they don't get the results that they want at an expert level when they've just done a couple of lessons or they're just getting started with it or they might not know how to learn, how to teach themselves. I am a self-taught artist and I ended up working in some of the world's biggest video games, okay? I know this for a fact. I know that this is something that anyone can do because there's not all that anything particularly special or unique about me. I grew up very, very low income and a lot of struggles in a factory town. And, and it was not common for anybody <laughs> to move away and go and work in big entertainment studios or anything like that. So I know for a fact that anyone can develop these skills, no matter where you are in the world, no matter what your budget is, no matter what your income is, no matter what your, even your, your mental capacity is, your IQ, you don't need to be a brilliant genius to learn to draw, but you're going to need some tools. You're going to need some guiding stars to point you in the right direction. And to use that metaphor a bit further, a lot of people just send their ships out to sea without really knowing where they're headed. And if you're doing that, you're floating adrift and it may feel desperate and dire at times. You might feel like, oh, it's time to just give up on the voyage. But if you've got a guiding star, if you've got some direction that you need to go and you know that you need to head in that direction, it really helps you to stay on course and it helps to keep that, maintain that hope and ma maintain that goal in your mind of where you're going with it. So that's what this video is about. I wanna talk about the three different stages of your development as an artist. And this is, this is documented in psychology, the method for learning a new skill or learning a new expertise. The first stage, and this is where most people are going to be at when they just start doodling and they're not really sure how the art is used or, or how it's even constructed, but they're fascinated with emulating what they see. This is the cognitive phase. You're very consciously aware. And if you think about this, like driving a car, it's like when you're first driving a car, you're very thoughtful of every movement. Well, is my foot on the brake? Is my foot on the gas? I have to be thinking about flipping the turn signal on and you have to be consciously aware of every motion that you're doing. And it can feel overwhelming during this phase because you're consciously trying to do things quote right. You're trying to follow a track. And this is where it's really helpful to have a lot of tutorials that are very handholdy, you know, the kind of training wheels, like my easy art lessons, for instance, which are basically the fundamentals of drawing. These are things like drawing in one point perspective, two point perspective, three point perspective, drawing light and casting shadows, understanding how much pressure to apply to the pen or the brush, learning color theory, the basics of, and the basic building blocks. If you think about it that way, it's really like the essential Legos to make your construction, right? And understanding, well, I need a good support here and I need a good composition here. And this is the, also the sketch phase of your entire development where you're just figuring out the basics and it's going to be frustrating at times, but that's where it's okay to accept in that cognitive state. You're still in that early beginner stage of learning and you're going to need things like coaching or feedback. You're going to need things like encouragement. You're going to need little wins and you need to be in a mental state that is not expecting yourself to perform at an expert autonomous level. No, you're still in the beginner stage and that's okay. It's okay to take your time and, and recognize that anything worth doing is going to take a lot of time, not just, you know, 20 minutes a week but a substantial amount of time. And most professional artists end up spending, you know, if you think about it, 40 hours a week at minimum just to develop their craft. So if you can at least do, you know, three hours a night after school or after work, that you're developing your skills, but don't just meander, don't just doodle, learn with intention. And that means learning new skills. So 
picking up things like workshops from professionals. I like to, of course, promote my own workshops and tutorials that I make, but there are a lot of professionals out there that teach art. And I'm not just talking about the YouTube stuff. The stuff that you're going to see on YouTube is usually entertainment. It's artists talking about some goofball. Oh, you can draw anything with this one shape or use this one trick to make people think your art's good. And like, they're mostly clickbait. The YouTuber mindset is not about teaching you anything. It's really mostly about, and I'm saying this as a YouTuber, but I'm also a teacher. <laughs> and it's also why my channel isn't as popular as some of the more entertainment focused channels that just do paintings with Skittles or whatever, you know, and those are fun. Those are nice. Those are exciting. And I'm not, I don't want to come across like being critical of them. Entertainment's important. A lot of art is entertainment, but to get clicks it's not about teaching people the fundamentals and that's kind of what i'm getting at is it's a little can be boring it doesn't have to be boring if you do things like follow along with very fun lessons for instance if you find a great teacher this can really help you through the cognitive phase when i was learning to program i was very frustrated trying to read from a book but there was a really really entertaining and fun and light-hearted teacher that taught programming on YouTube and I followed many of his videos and I bought many of his workshops and his tutorials that taught me how to build basic programming for a basic platformer and I found that once I had accomplished that I wanted to move on and once you can once you can comfortably do some of these things without the training wheels think of it like you're riding a bike when is that moment what is that day when you kind of go okay I don't need the training wheels anymore I feel pretty comfortable I not relying on them as much. I'm not relying on the tutorials as much. I'm starting to branch out on my own and I'm starting to take the two point perspective lesson where I'm just drawing treasure chests or, or houses. And now I'm designing more complex buildings with that same two point perspective. I'm getting creative with the lessons that I've been learning, the tools that I've been acquiring, those fundamentals. I can now apply them to do things that I might have dreamed about or things that I wanted to challenge myself with. This is also where things like my community on Discord is really helpful because every month we have challenges where everybody gets to challenge themselves with a new perspective or new monster design challenge or a new character design challenge. These are great opportunities for you to go in and go, oh, I need to work on my anatomy or, oh, I need to work on my perspective or, oh, I need to work on my lighting or my rendering. And these are great opportunities for you to constantly improve those skills and share it with other people to get a little bit of feedback. And it's a great community. So they will actually help you out with giving you at least some pointers or notes or even maybe just a little bit of encouragement. And that can go a long way when, you know, if you're just doing it in a vacuum, it can feel like, well, what's the point? Nobody notices anyway, and I'm not any good. But if people are seeing your improvement and you're involved in the community and you're also offering help to other people, that can be really beneficial for you to stick with it and keep coming back to it and wanting to show off new skills that you've just acquired. Okay. And so once you're ready and like you've built several things using tutorials and you've gone through like all of my easy art lessons, and now it's time to start drawing your own characters and your own poses in your own environments. That's when you graduate to the second phase of your development, which is the associative phase. And at this point, you're beginning to understand the requirements and skills to become more consistent and to become more reliable you're doing. You're building confidence, basically. You've had a few wins, and now it's time for you to start to really challenge yourself with new things. This is getting a little bit more complicated. You know, you're you're not just doing, you know, 15-minute lessons anymore. You know, now you're doing things where you're working on a singular painting for three or four hours, and you're really paying attention to the details of it, and maybe even need to pull up some reference at that point and go, oh, well, I, maybe... I, really want to get the hair looking the way that this other artist does hair. And so I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a break from doing my three, four hour painting. And I'm just going to do a study of this other artist's hair and the way that they draw hair, because I want that in this drawing of what I'm doing. And I'm going to dissect how they're doing it. You no longer need training wheels to do this anymore. And the associative, associative phase is when you can really rely on all the things that you learn during that cognitive phase. And this is where a lot of people get tripped up because they skip the cognitive phase and they go right into the associative or the autonomous phase. They go right into like, I expect professional level degrees of competence from myself. And then you get frustrated because it doesn't reach that expectation and then end up just quitting because the reward isn't really there, you know? And so it's important for you to acknowledge that 
maybe you're at an intermediate or an associative level and it's important for you to accept that maybe you're not at the level where you're going to be getting hired because you're still developing your skills. And that's a good thing. That's a great thing because it means that you get to start digging into more minute things like how cloth might flow off of a character's body or the more minute details of anatomy such as like I, I avoided drawing back muscles for like, you know, several years. I just was I was so nervous about it and I didn't want to do anything that made my work look weak, right? You don't want to do something that suddenly makes your audience or the people that you're showing your work to suddenly think, oh, well, maybe he doesn't know or maybe she doesn't know what she's doing. You know, you don't want to be like show your vulnerabilities, but that's part of developing as an artist is accepting yourself warts and all and kind of accepting the flaws in your own work and also seeing that it's an opportunity to maybe make a conscious change in what you're doing. So in the associative phase is when you start to get a little more nitpicky and that's when you start to go, well, I really don't like the way that I do my lighting and I really need to address that. Maybe I want to make a list of the things, the specific things that are on a much more detailed level. They're not just the fundamentals. It's more advanced than the fundamentals. It's, you know, how does color theory work with lighting? And that can become overcomplicated very quickly, but you can find tutorials that are specifically focused on that, for example. And the associative phase is also the point at which you might start to decide which discipline you want to pursue. You know, a lot of people think that, you know, studying animation is going to help them to become a concept artist in video games and nothing could be further from the truth. The specialization of a animator for a 2D animated film is a very different role than a concept artist for a video game. It's like saying that, well, if you're good at golf, you must also be good at basketball. No, these are, there's a very different, like certainly you're, you know, there's endurance training and there's, you know, just overall bodily fitness and, and strength training. And, and there's all the things, the details that come from being a generally healthy or athletic person, but the details of how to play good basketball is very different than how to play good football. And we cannot continue along this path where we act like being a good Instagram artist means that you're a very employable concept artist in video games or a very good comic book artist. They're not the same. And yes, being an Instagram artist or a YouTube artist, these are very different jobs than doing illustration splash art for, for instance, League of Legends or something. And that's a very different job than doing concept art for League of Legends. And, you know, don't let things like ArtStation or Kotaku, and, and I'm not picking on those these places, they're just, they're not informed about the development process enough to explain it. I watched a video one time that said that, uh, Miyazaki, the, the director of the Dark Souls series, was a great concept artist. They made their top five concept artists list. And I couldn't help it. I never comment other people's videos, hardly ever. But I had to say it, you know, he's a director. That's not what a concept artist does. <laughs> like, you guys are a journalism website. You should know the difference. And, and I think that during the associative phase of studying concept art or studying your discipline, you should be defining which industry you want to get into and which information you need to develop and, and write those things down. And how do you find out what skills you need to develop? Go to the job listings. You can go to indeed.com or you could go to Glassdoor. I think there's many job listing sites. You could go to websites for actual game studios and in their job listings, they will state the requirements that you need to develop and it will tell you. You know, oh, you need to have great understanding of the fundamentals or, oh, you need to be able to translate ideas into 3D. You know, these this information is going to be important for you to make your list of things that you need to specialize in and develop if you're going to pursue this as a career. And if you're going the route of being like a gallery artist or something like that, well, those are very different requirements than doing for movies for games. So pay attention to those details at this stage if you're in, in the associative level. If you're still in the cognitive phase, the beginner phase, you don't need to think about that as much. It's just about getting your fundamentals down. But once you get into that point where you're starting to think, well, maybe I want to pursue this as a career, that's when it's important to specialize. And don't assume that just because your paintings are good that you're going to get scouted, you will have to start applying for those jobs. And that's going to bring me into the autonomous phase. And at this point, with the autonomous phase is when you're no longer thinking about the gear shifter in your car, you're no longer thinking about the training wheels, you're no longer even thinking about the pedals or the levers for the brakes. 
it's automatic. And I'm trying to relate this to something that almost everybody knows how to do, just riding a bike or driving a car. If you've reached that point, then you know that you're no longer thinking about the notes you're playing or where they, where the string is on the guitar string. You're literally just thinking about the sound that you want from your mind and your hands are doing it because you've done enough of the automatic training. This is something that Bruce Lee talked a lot about, which was, you know, there's this phase where you're, you're consciously thinking about the movements and then you're trying to build those into automatic reactions so that when the moment comes for you to do, your body needs it to do, it is re reactive. It is not even thinking about it. You're in a reactive state. You don't need to think about composition, it automatically happens. And how do you get good at this? You get good at this by looking at other artists. You get giving paint overs. You learn this actually, ironically enough, in the autonomous phase, and this is almost the mastery phase, is when you're really digging into the minutia, like the stuff that most people will never even think is important. And you'll be ignored by the average person who's just learning the beginners because they want the big flashy stuff, but they don't understand it's all about the combination of many years of studying the minutia. And once, and how do you get into this? You get into this phase by teaching. Because when you're teaching, you start to really analyze why you've been doing what you're doing. And you start to analyze how you learned what you learned. And you start to analyze the mistakes that other people are making and how you can avoid them in your own artwork of itself. I grew exponentially as an artist as soon as I started running an art house where I was painting over and art directing other people's work on a daily basis. I could identify colors that worked better together and why they worked better together. I could identify composition and how composition could increase the energy in a scene and the flow of a scene and the expression and the emotion through the characters. All these things are things that it's so much easier to look at from an outside perspective and evaluate. And then once you're doing your own paintings, you'll realize that all the things that you're teaching other people are suddenly infused into the pieces that you're doing and presenting as well. When you reach this point, it's almost automatic. You, you don't really have to even think about it. You're not really paying much attention to the small things. You're no longer like really even thinking that the pedals are there. It's just the thing beneath you is the vehicle that gets you to where you want to be. And so when you look at a blank page, you have automatic tricks that you fall back on that just fill the page so that you have something to start with. And you're not afraid to make mistakes. You've accepted all of those mistakes and you grow with them. You flow with them. And in fact, you embrace them because sometimes it's those unexpected things that happen that make you really want to improvise and the improvisation is part of the joy. It's sort of like listening to a jazz musician versus a beginner guitar player. You know, there's quite a difference there, <laughs> you know, somebody who can really roll with whatever's happening on the fly and a person who's very consciously like stringent and needs these rails. That's the contrast. And, you know, that's sort of the end of the story, but it's really the beginning because once you get into the mastery of a thing is when the universe begins to unlock and then you start to realize there's so much more than just 2D painting. And there's now there's programming and now there's animation and now there's these other disciplines and then there's appreciation for those other disciplines and how they interlock with all the things that you'd been studying over the last 30 years or whatever it is of this journey. And it's all this culmination of sense of constant perpetual growth that ultimately just leads you to what is essentially something that's effortless to you, but amazing to others. And that's a beautiful place to be, but you also always constantly kind of feel this feeling that there's still miles more for you to grow. And the sooner you can get to that headspace then and accept that you're still a beginner, even as you're a master, then the sooner you're going to accept that it doesn't really matter what happens. You don't have, there's no right way or wrong way. There's just adapting to whatever's right in front of you and adapting to the needs of your customers and your clients and your audience. And then you ultimately reach a point of, I don't want to say that there's some end, you know, to it all, because quite frankly, it's a beautiful thing that there is not. There's always some new thing to learn or a new style to develop. And, and we see that in all the masters as well. Van Gogh struggled with, you know, doing more realistic stuff until he just kind of went, nah, I'm going to really go in a totally different direction now. And it was, and some people would argue that it's less skilled and others would say that it's just more of a identity, stronger brand to go in this kind of more stylistic impressionist way. And so that's kind of what happens when you get to that level. And it's no longer about the output of one painting. It's about the conversation. It's about the journey in the same way that you don't want to just like build up or train up to do one conversation. No, 
A lot of artists think, oh, well, once I do that one beautiful painting, that'll be it. I'll be known for that. No, nope, no, nope. it just keeps going on and on. That's just a byproduct of the conversation that you've been enjoying your whole life. And that's all this is. So I don't want to talk too much about mastery beyond that, because that might scare some people. Because if you're a beginner, that sounds really intimidating. Or it could also sound really exciting. It's like, it's infinite, you know, and it's a wonderful journey. And it quite honestly is one of the most gratifying things that a person could do with their life is to have the pursuit of mastery over a craft or a skill. For me, I've chosen art and video game development, and it's been super rewarding. I would not trade a single thing about it. And, you know, I've been doing it for 30 years almost now in and, and comic books and video games. And quite honestly, I love it now more than I ever have capable of doing so much more than I ever could. And there are more opportunities open to me because I've built a little bit of a foundation there and you can build on that momentum. So think about that every time you're sitting down and doing a drawing at whatever phase you're in, you're building momentum, you're on the journey, you're on the adventure right now. And all those curveballs that are being thrown at you, those are just delicious, challenging you know, problem apples that you get to munch on for a while. And then you come out the other side and now they're no longer problems. You know, there's something else. And that's a beautiful thing. And so wherever you are on your journey, if you're looking to specialize in concept art for video games or you're making a comic book, I have workshops for both of those things. Those are both things that I did as a profession for, like I said, 30 years. And so you can really pick my brain and shortcut your way there and get a career doing those things if you wanted to, if you were ready for it. If you're a beginner and you're just learning the fundamentals, I want to encourage you to go back to the easy art lessons. And this is something like almost 30 or 40 lessons that'll teach you in, in less than 20 days how to draw the basics, the fundamentals, they'll carry over into every aspect of your art career and your art journey. And of course, I want you to be successful. I want you to have the art career of your dreams, your creative career of your dreams. So if you are interested in that, please do subscribe. I'm here just about every week with a new video like this one. And uh, so don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, ciao. Everybody knows how demanding it is to be a concept artist or an artist in today's modern society, specifically in the video game industry. That is why I've created the legendary Photoshop cheat box. If you want to double or triple your speed, then you're going to need to know some of the techniques and tricks that I've developed over the last 20 years of working with Photoshop. I'm going to show you very concise step-by-step -step ways to improve your process and to ultimately get greater results in less time, making your employers happy, getting you more money, and ultimately even possibly growing your audience online as well. So check out my legendary Photoshop cheat box.